Hey everyone, it's Dennis, and in the Notability tutorial I dropped about a year or so ago, the feedback was really positive, but as one of you rightly pointed out, Notability has since had an update. So I've spent the last couple months to really get to grips with everything to do with the brand new Notability UI, and I'm confident I can deliver a top class tutorial for all you guys. Oh, and by the way, I've taken all the advice on board from the previous video. To the point where I've now got a secondary camera right here and I'll be screen recording my iPad as well. Oh, and by the way, I'm using Notability on the iPad Pro 12.9 inch edition, but it should also work on other iPad models and on Android devices as well. So let's dive right into it. To start, you need to launch Notability. For me, it's already in my dock down here, so you just have to open it up. Now, when you open up Notability for the first time, you'll see a screen similar to this, except you will have no current notes. So the first thing I'd recommend is to go to the settings bar at the top left corner. From here, you have a whole bunch of options. Now, I think the important ones are first to back up your data. At one point in my time, Notability actually removed everything. And if I did not have it backed up to my Google Drive, I would have lost all my documents. So that's the first thing I'd recommend doing is make sure you have some kind of auto backup. I personally use Google Drive, but feel free to use Dropbox, OneDrive, Box, WebDAV if you use it, anything that you think would be best for you. The next tab is manage accounts. This is where you can log into a Notability account, which is what I would recommend, especially if you want to also use Notability on your MacBook, for example, so you can sync it across both devices. You can also use your iCloud if you want to sync it there instead. In terms of the themes, I personally use dark mode, but of course that only changes the appearance, doesn't actually change how Notability works inside. Now document type, this is important. Now the standard default document is the letter document as they call it, where it's just handwriting lines. I personally change this because I study engineering at university. I personally use the grid formation as it's better for when I want to do maths. But you can change it to plane, rule, dot, whatever floats your boat. I also would recommend changing the grid size. I actually reduce my spacing to two because I believe the default is four and it makes it really wide. So I would say that so you don't have to keep changing it within every document. Going through the other settings quickly here, we've got typing where you can change your font and default text size. I haven't altered this, but feel free to. Handwriting as well, that's simple. That just tells you what language you're writing in. It's gonna be English for the majority of people. And math conversion as well, I've turned that on because I do engineering. So it can convert my actual handwritten equations into high res mathematical formulas. Straight line shape detection and palm detection, I'd all tick on, they make a big difference, especially the palm detection one. If you don't have that on, your, your, basically your palm will start writing for you, which is obviously not what you want. Audio transcription is on for me, but I personally do not use this feature. But when I did my last Notability tutorial, a few people do. So I would recommend turning it on, especially if you want to turn on the feature during lectures, which I will show you how to do that later in the tutorial. Lock subjects, that's if you want to actually set a password for certain documents. So only if you input that password, you can actually open it. I don't personally do this, but if you have any confidential information, it's probably recommended. Gestures as well, that's two finger to tap. I completely forget to use this. It's a good shortcut, but I personally just forget to use this. I use the arrows in the top corner. Okay, so now all the settings should be up to date. Let's get into creating and sorting documents. So if you first look at, look at Notability, you have your notes on the left-hand side. Just underneath you have the gallery. Now, this is where you have actual other Notability users creating templates, and these are quite good. I don't personally use them, but for example, you could search fitness, and there'll be someone that creates a fitness template, for example, for your fitness workout. If you click the blue arrow in the bottom right corner, this should be able to import it into a document if you want to use these. But for the vast majority of Notability users, they will purely be using it for academic or vocational purposes. So I'm gonna show you how to use the notes now. First on the left hand side, you have subjects. Now I've got two, YouTube and university. These are called dividers. So I use Notability purely for my university work, but also creating scripts for my YouTube videos. So if I expand both these, you can see that the YouTube just has YouTube scripts, one subject, but under university, I've got five distinct subjects for my subjects this year. Now you can see a subject is differentiated by a circle and its specific color on the left hand side. You add your own subjects and dividers, you click the plus next to subjects, and then you can add a subject or divider individually. I'm gonna add a divider here, I'm gonna name it uh, YT for short for YouTube. Now, if you want to move pre-made actual subjects into that divider that's very simple you just have to hold over it and then drag it up into underneath where the document is and it should be able to fall just inside and then you have it right here so if you open and close the divider you'll have your subject inside there so that now means if i open up a specific subject for example operations i've now got all my individual notes within that subject for that lesson this is really helpful for my organization to be able to differentiate different subjects and the notes there. 
Let me start up an individual note to show you guys what all the operations do. To do this, you just have to click new in the top right corner. And note, because I'm currently on notes right now on the left hand side, this new document will be unfiled. If I was to, for example, click on YouTube scripts and then click new, the file will automatically be filed into my YouTube script subject. So as we click new, you'll see a brand new document open. As I said before, I personally use the grid formation with a spacing of two, as I believe it's best for the mathematics I mostly do in engineering. But for some of you, might, you may see a different document type, for example, the normal lines. Also, when you first launch a document, Notability actually is part of their new update, allows you to instantly change the document type. For example, down the bottom left, I'm gonna change mine to now a line setup. So you have your fresh new document in here and at the top you'll have a task toolbar. Now this has been edited with the brand new Notability updates. The first one is your pen. So this is where you've got different colors you can add there. If you click the add button as well, you can add brand new colors and it's got a large spectrum of them. I stick to mostly black, red, green and blue to be honest with you guys. If you scroll to the right, you can change the actual size of the pen. So small is right now and it looks something like this. But if I change it to big, it looks like this and in the biggest setting looks like this. So I personally stick with the smaller settings. I believe it's most aesthetic, especially for the work I'm doing, especially because I take a lot of small notes. So I zoom in an awful lot to take them. If I zoom in and use this, you can see it gets very hard to actually read out. What you can also change the pen stroke. So the default stroke right here is the normal bullet point pen as they call it. So as I write, no matter how hard I hold down the screen, it's gonna be the same. However, if I change the fountain pen, as I hold down, the pen actually gets more bold and defined. Equally, you've got the two here, which are like the hash line. So I can actually write and it'll give a hash line right here with spaces in the middle. Next on the toolbar, we have the pencils. I personally do not use this to be honest because I mean, I'm not drawing. If you're drawing on Notability app, sure, I'd say use them. I personally don't, I just stick to the pen. But the next feature is the highlighter, which I do use an awful lot. I've got quite a few colors here, as you can see. So you can highlight text as normal, just like you use the pen. However, a neat feature I like to use is if you hold down and then drag across, it will automatically create a straight line which you can adjust in any direction. This is something that not a lot of people know and it happens with the pens as well. For example, I've got the red pen here, right? If I just hold a straight line trying to draw straight, it's gonna look like that. But if I hold the pen first and then draw, you can see it snaps into whatever direction I want and will create a perfectly straight line. Next, we have the eraser. Now, as it says in the tin, the eraser just erases anything on your document, however, it will do it one by one. For example, you've got the highlighter here, so it'll raise your highlighter first and then each word. So as you can see, if you want to erase small things, fine, the eraser works perfectly, but for large scale items, it's not the best. So I actually use two other methods. The first method involves the undo button in the top left corner. I use this if I've just made a quick mistake and want to undo. And the other method uses the lasso over here, which I will get to later in the video. Next, we have the text function. Now, I didn't use this an awful lot when I gave my first tutorial, but since then I've used it more and more, especially for my YouTube scripts. So if I tap anywhere on the document now, the text comes up and I can start typing away saying this is a YouTube tutorial, for example, and it will type up on the Notability document going into the lines as well. So this is a really neat feature, especially if you want to send over some academic documents to professors, for example, but don't want to do half of it on Word and half of it on Notability. You can type parts on Notability so it looks really clean and nice and aesthetic in that sense, but also do maths on the same document as well. And the next feature, as mentioned, is a lasso. And in my opinion, this is the biggest game changer. And I said this in the first tutorial as well. So what the lasso does, there's two options, the free form and box. I personally use free form. What box does is as you draw here, it creates a box, but I personally prefer freeform because what freeform allows you to do is draw whatever shape you like so you can select multiple items at once. Then with the lasso, you can then move this anywhere you like on the document. For example, I'm gonna move it down here. And the other thing I said that I was saying how it's better than eraser is the ability to delete right here. So I can delete all the information by clicking on the right hand side. I can also with the lasso change a lot of the style. So if I click in the middle after selecting the items I want to deal with, I can then either change the style of them. For example, I can make the stroke bigger. I can change the colors. There's also other options as well of the style. I can duplicate, I can cut, copy, convert into maths, as I said earlier, group, save, and delete as well. So the lasso is a big game changer. If you're, if you're not using a lasso, you're actually missing out on a lot of productivity right there. Next, we have the photo board function. Now, I personally do not use this, but it does have some productive effects. If you save an item, for example, I can click on this right here, this line right here and save it. So if I selected the lasso and then click save, 
When I then go to click on the photo board, it will be saved right here. So I can click on it and this brand new item, basically a duplicate can show up and I can happen across multiple documents. So I've got one pre-made here, Understanding Young's Modulus. I should use this more and I do use it at times. If you're especially doing something that involves a lot of repetitive actions and you know you want to create a preset that you will use on multiple occasions, I would definitely, definitely use a stickers function. If not, it's not as useful, but it's there for you if you need it. Alongside, you also have GIFs to use if you want to use it. You've got sticky notes, which I don't personally use, but you can use on your document if you want to add, especially if you're doing, I know medics use this a lot because they want to make really aesthetic notes because they're studying medicine. And you've also got the photo album to add photos and the camera as well, pre-saved on your device. Next, you have the microphone feature. Now, I personally, as I said before, do not use this. However, a lot of people do. Now, if I click play and start talking and then start writing at the same time, if you go back to play it, you will see your writing alongside as it's being spoken. So you will see, for example, if I say, this is a YouTube tutorial, and then as it plays back, you will see the pen actually write it alongside when I actually said the statement in real life. So for people that are sitting in lectures fairly close to the lecturer, they can use this, especially because they'll see, oh, I wrote this when the lecturer was saying this, for example. The microphone feature is fairly decent, and if you click the button right here, you'll now be able to listen to the audio and can move forward and backwards in time. So now we can move on to the second page of the toolbar. So if you drag over, you start with the item right here. Now, what this allows to happen is it allows your pen to actually be used to drag up and down the paper. I don't personally use this because I use my finger to drag, drag up and down instead, but for some people, it may be of use. Next, you have the zoom function. This allows you to zoom into a specific part and then you can actually make it bigger and smaller and start writing inside as well, which I think can be very useful. Next, we have the laser pointer. Now, this is very good for presentations because it allows me to show you what I'm talking about. I could have been using it throughout this tutorial, to be honest, so that I can point to specific areas on the page, especially if you're actually showing a document, for example, on Microsoft Teams or Zoom, where me saying, look here or look there, doesn't really do much because the people aren't seeing me point to the actual item in real life. The laser pointer shows exactly what I'm referring to. For example, look at the sticky note right here. The next item is tape. Now, <laughs> I don't use this to be honest, but you can tape over anything and then of course, rewrite over it again if you really want to. Like I said, I personally don't use this. I think it's one of the more useless features on Notability to be honest, but they've added it as part of their new update, so fair enough. We also have the ruler available to Notability Plus customers. Now, like I said, this also could be useful if you're measuring certain items, but in terms of writing straight, it's not, it's not really useful, I'd say, because as I showed you guys before, if you snap anyway and hold your line straight, it will be a straight line. So you wouldn't use the ruler for straight lines in that respect, only to actually measure the size of items. But when I do engineering, a lot of the documents actually say, oh, the items are not to scale whenever I'm doing problems. So the ruler feature is wasted on me, but it might be useful to certain people. I want to remove the ruler, just pinch it, and then drag it away from your screen, basically. And if you click the settings on the far right-hand side, you can then add and deselect certain toolbox elements. So for example, if you know you're gonna use the navigate feature a lot, you can then drag it up inside your main toolbox. And if you know you're never gonna use record, you can drag that out of there, for example. I've not personally touched it because I believe the default settings are best for my personal use. But if you feel like you want to use one item more than others, feel free to change around the order. And you can always reset the default using the red button in the bottom. In the top right corner, you have two other features as well. The three dots here surrounded by the circle allows you to share your document and change the template, as I said before, as well as the settings. So your template can be changed to a whole set of options. Like I said, I use the grid an awful lot, but for some people, they might like Cornell Notes. I know that was pushed heavy uh, to me when I was in school. You can use the college rule, for example. If you're doing engineering, you can use the engineering grid. I'm studying engineering, I still don't use that, <laughs> but you never know. And you've also got the page manager. This allows you, if this document is, I'd say around five, 10 pages at least, you can scroll through and see different pages and you can choose to, to clear the page, create a template from it. You can copy the page and cut the page as well as add the page underneath as well. So that is everything when it comes to actually note taking, but there are some bonus features as well that I use an awful lot. The first one is importing documents externally into Notability. Let's show you how to do that. So if I switch over to Safari here, I've got a document that I'm going to use for my tutorials. If I then click the top right corner, the box up here, you, I can then upload it. I then click Notability is one of my options. I'm gonna create a new note. Note title, doesn't matter right now. Subject, it is traffic. <laughs> Ironically enough, it has selected the right uh, topic already. Pages, all of them, and click Import. So now, if I switch over back to Notability, 
and go back and go to my traffic option. As you can see, the note is right here, ready for me to edit now. And when you are done and want to share that document to a friend, for example, you can click the three dots on the top, click quick share. It will take some time to save it and then you can airdrop it, email it, whatever you would like to do that you can export that document wherever you like. Now, let's say you finish your file. For example, the one we just finished here, the note 7th of November, 2023, brackets two. And I want to actually change it now into a subject. So what I can do is I can hold on to it and then manually drag it into one of the subjects. I'm gonna drag it into YouTube scripts, for example. So when I then click on YouTube scripts, you'll see the notes at the top right there. And I can easily drag it out again as well. So that concludes our Notability tutorial for 2023 going into 2024. As always, drop a like down below if this video did help you and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. And please let me know in the comment section if there's any further tips you would like to provide or anything in this video you think needs further clarification. Check out the video right here if you want to see how I use Notability as an engineering student. I've been Dennis, I appreciate your company throughout this video and I hope to catch you all in my next one. Take care.